Lord at First Baptist. We are so glad to have you in the house of the Lord. I know you're so glad to be inside of a dry place this morning. Um, I'm sorry for those who got caught by the rain on the way in, but hopefully it'll be cleared up or at least paused so that we can get out and, and leave on to uh, where we need to do this afternoon. But uh, glad that you're here this morning. If you're visiting with us, once you know you're an honored guest, we're so glad to have you. Looking forward to getting to know you and your family a little bit better. Hope this service will be a blessing to you. Um, there's a place for uh, visitor information. If you'll share some of that with us to help us to kind of contact you. Um, it's on the back of your bulletin. Uh, so there's a pen, I know, and a few. And you can just fill it out if you're a visitor. And at the end, um, you just drop it in the offering box. We do offering boxes here. So you won't see a plate pass, but if you so choose to give an offering this morning, you can do that as well there. I just look forward to, to getting to know you. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, as you'll notice, we have a, a bit of a different setup in the bulletin this morning as well. It still looks like a booklet where we're trying to add as many inserts as possible so that things will fall out when you open it up. And uh, we have, of course, uh, your sermon notes that you can follow along in just a moment when uh, I go through that with you. Um, also, uh, very thankful Mary Bill worked with uh, Nancy this week, and we have a, a very nice and new looking uh, prayer uh, list. And so, I want you to enjoy that. Hopefully, it'll be a little easier to handle as well. Um, as we usually keep some copies around during the week as well, if you come for prayer meeting and following. Um, but this will kind of make it a little easier in the office too, because it folds, the machines will fold it. And uh, it's also in the format of publisher. If you've never worked with publisher before, don't. Um, but if you have to, um, you have to, and we do. We have all our stuff in publisher. Um, the craziest thing, Microsoft makes Word and publisher, but they don't work together. They don't like each other very much. So uh, thank you to, to, to Mary's work and Nancy as well. She's doing a tremendous job in, in our time of absence so without a secretary in the office. So I wanted you to know that and to let um, you know that this, these are available. Of course, we can get that information to you electronically as well if you have ever need for that and have a question of that. Also, I'd like to say if um, you would like a bulletin uh, mailed to you or you know someone or you're shut in, you know you're if you're online, uh, and you would like one, please let us know in the church office. We'd be glad to do that. Um, I know I've had some requests when I went visiting, and so I don't mind personally delivering it, but we can also probably go a little quicker might be mailing it out to you. So if you would like one mail to you, just let us know. And uh, we'd be glad uh, to do that. Leave a message at the office if someone's not there. Or email us or however you can get a hold of us this morning. Glad to have you here this morning in the house of the Lord together. Okay. Not this day is coming up. And I want to approach it just a little bit differently. The it is Mother's Day. But we have a lot of women who may not be a mother, but they certainly are nurturing and caring for our children. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to send your photo free uh, to me or to the sound room. The emails are in the bulletin. And if you are a single mom or if you, no matter your situation, send us a picture of you and your children or of you. We want every woman in this church to be represented on Mother's Day, okay? Um, or if you do not have family and you have a picture of you and your mom, send us that. We just want to see you up here when we're showing this up, okay? Now, we also have one more thing that has happened, and that is um, in April, we had a gentleman who uh, historically has two birthdays. You know who I'm speaking of if you've been here long. And if you don't, I'll tell you, Reverend Vernon Braswell. Um, his mom says one day, the uh, records say a different day. He decided to go with his mom today because she was there when it happened. He thinks she ought to know. But there, is, there are two birthdays. So according to that, uh, he just turned 174. Okay? <laughs> so I think that's worthy of singing, don't you? <laughs> Some other 
church this <laughs> once a year, so we don't even know. <laughs> Mother's Day brunch tickets are on sale through tomorrow, $20 per person, and like Miss Judy said, it's not limited to just mothers. It's anyone who's been a mother figure in your life. Contact me through tomorrow, email, phone number on the back of the bulletin for a ticket. That's at 10 a.m. on May 13th in the Family Life Center. And also, we talked last week how all of our kids and youth are learning about fruit of the Spirit. I did just want to let everyone know, on Wednesday nights, our youth are also starting a new Bible study called Thinking Biblically, where we, where we will be talking about every cultural issue that our children come into, that happen in their lives these days, and the biblical viewpoint of where we stand as Christians on these. So be praying for us as we start this new Bible study this Wednesday. That's all. Have you ever set limitations on God? Just didn't think big enough? I have. Uh, this morning, we're going to sing about how great He is. Would you stand and sing, Great are you, Lord?
right, so this morning, I'm going to tell you a story that's going to relate to uh, the Bible lesson that we have for today. And the story is about a young man, um, and he was getting ready to go off to, to school. And so before he went to school, his mom said, before you go, I want you to take something with you. Take this, this card with you. And it said on the card, it says, I am loving you. And capable. She called it an ILAC card because she abbreviated these big words here in the, the first letter of the words. And so she made it uh, available for him and wanted him to know that he is loved by God and loved by her and that he's very capable, meaning that he can do anything. God is with him and he can do anything. And he wanted to know that he was able to do things. So he went to school, put the card in his pocket. And he went to school, and when he went to school, um, he noticed that the, the kids were at recess, were kind of gathering around, and they were waiting to do something. They were waiting to get on teams. Have y'all ever done this before? You have a captain, or you maybe have two co-captains, and what it means is you have to pick your team. Have y'all done that? Do they still do that? I don't know, because I haven't been to elementary school in a few years. Um, so they still do that. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So you know how it works. You've got the captains, and they have to pick people. And it, it takes some time because you have to pick. It depends on how many there are. And so you have to wait your turn for them to pick you. And so he was waiting and waiting. And did you know what happened? He was the last person to be picked. And you know what the worst place, the worst person to get picked is usually the last. The one that's not as good as the others. And so he kind of felt bad about it and thought, well, I thought I could. I could, you know, play well. I thought I knew that sport well. He said, but I, I guess I'm not very capable. So he took out his card and he kind of tore up his card a little bit. And then uh, at time for, you know, to eat and to have lunch. I know you eat at school still. Sometimes you eat breakfast, sometimes you eat lunch. I know sometimes you even snack at school these days. But anyway, so make sure that you eat. And so when he was eating, he was eating something. And you know what happened? This happens to me all the time. I bet it happens to you. But he was eating something, and it dropped off his sport, and it hit his shirt. Does that mean he got food on his clothes? You ever done that before? Not, not much fun, is it? Kind of embarrassing uh, sometimes. And so he usually try to clean it up real quick with a napkin or something. And so he got food on his shirt. And so he took out the card again, and, and then he just kind of tore a little piece and said, Wow, I, I guess... I, I'm not very good at even eating today. And, and even the kids started kind of laughing and poking, hey, you got food on his shirt. And so he didn't feel very loved at that moment either. So he tore a little more of his card. By the time that he got home, his card was just torn to pieces. And so he pulled it out and he showed his mom after she asked, how was your, your day at school today? And he pulled it out and said, well, my car kind of got a little messed up. And you know what she said? She said, that's okay. I thought that that might happen because people aren't very nice sometimes. So you know people at school and, and they may say something mean to you or they may not want to play with you. It happens. We all have our time for all to say things we shouldn't say. And she said, that's okay because I've got a better one, a more permanent card for you to hold. And so she gave him a cross. He said, a cross? I don't understand. Isn't that, you know, what Jesus did? He went to the cross? He said, yes. He went to the cross for our sins. He did it because he loves us. And he knows that we are very uh, important and that we're able to do things uh, that he's allowed us to do. And he's helping us to learn these things. And when you wear this cross or if you keep this cross in your pocket, whenever you see it, Think about God loving you. And so there's a verse that I think of often. It's an easy one. I remembered it when I was your age. It's John 3, 16. And you might know it. And the congregation probably knows it too. And it basically says that God loved the world that he sent Jesus for us. He sent him to die for us on the cross. And so the cross reminds us that he loves us. And he's, he's given us ways to, to do things. And the Bible says even greater things than others. But sometimes people aren't nice, right? Sometimes they're not nice. And the story today is of a man uh, that is tormented, and people don't want to be around him and don't like him. And Jesus comes, and he shows love to him. 
and it changes his life. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later on uh, during uh, the worship service. I wanted to pray for you, and I want you each to have one of these crosses before you go. And anytime you see a cross, just remember uh, that God loves you, that Jesus died because he loves you, and he's allowed you to do the things that you can do. And even if we don't do them great and perfect, he loves us just the same. All right? So let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank him for the cross and for Jesus. Dear Lord, we thank you uh, for Christ and for Jesus and for Easter we just had and celebrated. It's just been a, a few weeks since then, but it reminds us that uh, that you didn't just die on the cross, but you defeated death. You came back to life and that you defeated it so that we can have a better life, we call it a more full life, and that we will have life eternal with you one day if we trust in you as our Savior. And Lord, you also provide a way for us to be forgiven. We're not always good. We do some bad things, and they call sin, and we know that. And because we know that, we ask for forgiveness, and the cross provides that for us. So, Lord, as we hold these crosses and as we see crosses, may we be reminded of the, the love that you have for us. And no matter what happens to us, uh, today or this week or how mean someone might uh, might be to us this day or this week, Lord, we know that you love us and you care for us and that you're going to be there for us to help us uh, to do the things that we need to do. Amen. 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 Thank you for bearing with me with the story this morning. It's, I think it's a good one, an important one. You know, it's the message that you're going to hear this morning is a little challenging if you think about it and how to relate that to a child. Uh, demon possession and things of that nature. I, I'm not getting into the intricate details of that, uh, but something that they can understand uh, that how we treat one another is very important. That's part of what we're going to look at today, that God loves all of us. Uh, even those who we think are outcasts are so far from God. They're not. God loves everyone. Um, again, pointing to uh, and directing towards uh, the prayer list. Um, just continue uh, to lift those ones up in your, your thoughts and prayers. Um, I've had some updates on, on others, unfortunately. Uh, some that have had um, some falls and some setbacks um, from surgeries that have gone well, unfortunately. So certainly there are those in need of our prayer, uh, those waiting on kind of next steps as well. Um, I know Joe continues to, to ask for your, your thoughts and prayers. And, and I wanted to also mention Judy, and though she's mentioned as well, but she certainly uh, appreciates your thoughts and prayers uh, as to the next steps for her as well. And uh, some of them are going to be very, very hard and very challenging. Um, so I would like to do, like I, I did once before with, with Joe, and uh, if you'll just pray from your seats as well. I know we don't have as many up here today, uh, but any that would like to lay hands on, on Judy today, um, we're going to do that as we go to the Lord in prayer during our prayer time. Most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, where we lift up one that is just so special to us, so important to the life of this church, Rosewood with First Baptist. But we just lift up Judy and just her her hand, her her arm, just really her whole body, Lord, for, for the healing that needs to take place. Lord, you've gifted her in so many ways and, and talented in so many ways to share those gifts with us for so many years and music playing the piano and just so many ways that she has blessed others and, and shared your love and shared the gospel truths and message through song. So Lord, we just give thanks for that and nothing else. And even if 
uh, Lord, that is it, Lord. I'm sure she would be thankful and just gracious that, Lord, you've allowed her to be a part of music ministry uh, for so many years. But, Lord, we pray for many more. And, Lord, we know that this is just weighing heavy on her, uh, this, this uh, not having the ability to, to play piano, the, the use of, of her fingers and hands like she would like. Lord, just, I pray that you would just comfort her today. Lord, if it's your will, Lord, we pray for healing, uh, a miracle to happen. Uh, Lord, that uh, the next steps would not really be needed because, Lord, you've already provided uh, the healing necessary. And, Lord, we pray that you would just uh, use her, uh, Lord, as a testament, uh, Lord, to going through trials and difficult times. Uh, Lord, we've all been through them, but, Lord, it's during these times that, Lord, Often you strengthen us, you encourage others. So, Lord, I pray this might be a testimony to others as well of your goodness. That, the Lord, even in the difficult times, Lord, we can be used by you as instruments of your love and peace. And, uh, Lord, just I pray that you would just give us a sense of direction and uh, comfort in knowing that you're with us and will guide us and direct us into making the right decisions. Uh, Lord, I, I know she's got some to make uh, with the doctor. But, Lord, we just lift her to you today. Lord, we uh, agree that we, we, we will and we wish that, that she would be healed. But, but, Lord, we give this to you, Lord. You are sovereign. You are over all. So we trust in you today. And, Lord, there are many uh, that are going through some rough times, I know, and, and difficult uh, physical times. Lord, we, we mentioned Joe this morning. I know there are others uh, that have had setbacks uh, from the, uh, the positive results and progress that they've had. So, Lord, I, I ask for comfort for them, and I ask that you would just give them that sense of peace that surpasses all understanding, uh, Lord, remind them that they're never alone, Lord, you're not going to desert us, and you've been there in the beginning, you've been there in the good times, and you're certainly not going to leave us during these difficult times, you're going to see us through, so Lord, I pray we be reminded of your truths and your word, uh, guide us in, in this day, in this service, in this time, that, that we might speak truth and love. Uh, through your word, however your spirit so chooses to move in this service, we ask that you would be in this place and that you would guide all that is said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. take just a moment and share what this is about, and I'll be very brief. Uh, November 1st, I fell at my home, and I broke the humerus bone in my arm. And um, as a result of that, the radial nerve that goes down your arm that allows you to move and to do this with your hands was damaged. Uh, I've had nerve conduction studies to see if that is probably going to heal and I got the word this week from the neurologist and from the surgeon that it has been damaged where it is probably not ever going to recover. And what that means is if I take this cast off, my hand does this, and I cannot lift my fingers at all. So if this stays this way, I can never play piano again. And you know that is so much of who I am. So here's the way I pulled it all together in my mind. I said, okay, the neurologist did his thing, the surgeon has done his thing, and they both had concluded the same result is likely. And I appreciate them more than I can tell you, but my third option, I'm waiting for God to weigh in. For God to say, well, you know, this isn't gonna be done by medical means, it's going to be done because I will have done. And I want you to help me pray in that regard, that God will heal my hand, and I will give him all of the glory. Okay? If you have been saved and redeemed, you have a story to share this morning. Would you stand?
songwriter has this belief that he um, may have wandered around and not have known where his true strength comes from. But he said once that he found there was honey in the rock, manna in the stone, and that God was with him everywhere he went, and that what God did on Calvary was indeed enough. Changed his tune. He says there's honey in the rock.
Welcome back to part two. Okay, what? Oh, there we are. Part two of our Contagious Christian series. We started last week. Look at our faith. We have to be grounded in our faith. Uh, we have to know where we're coming from, who uh, we belong to, who we believe in. Uh, we need to have a, a clear understanding of our faith. And so that's part of uh, being a Christian that goes and shares has to know who they are before they go and share. Uh, you know, it's not that it's impossible for someone that's just come into faith. In fact, they're usually the most excited to go and to share uh, about Christ. Uh, but they also have to go with the understanding they're new in the faith. And there's a lot to learn, of course, in the faith. Uh, but they can be a sense of court encouragement. Uh, to others, uh, reminds us of when we came to faith in Christ and how excited we were uh, to share with others. Because they, part of being a Christian is the desire to, to let others know so that they can be part of the body of Christ, so they can enjoy the riches and inheritance of God's kingdom. Uh, because it's the Lord's plan for us to go and to tell. We, we talked about that. It's if there's not a plan B, C, D, you name it. There, that's the plan is, is for us to go and to share and to tell. And uh, Jesus instituted that first with the disciples and, and, and so forth and so on. And everywhere he went, uh, he made disciples, but he, he shared with them the importance of sharing this good news uh, with others. So he wants us to be a part of that sharing message, of that going. So this morning we're going to look at the heart, kind of. What, what is at the center of the crux of, of being a Christian this morning? Uh, an odd place, probably, uh, for me to preach from, but Mark's Gospel, the fifth chapter, of course, this is the, the demon-possessed man. And so we're going to look in uh, the first verse here. I'm going to kind of, as I did last week, you can pull out your sermon notes and follow along where I'm going to uh, be covering Scripture-wise. But uh, I'm going to kind of read scripture throughout the message. So first, uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 1 uh, through 5. God's word says, They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. And the man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart, and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs, and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with the stones. So, talk about someone who needs to be rescued. You might say, to be saved. You know, here's someone that's being tormented night and day. And Jesus comes across him. And you can imagine uh, what his life was like. Um, it was a, just a terrible, terrible uh, existence of life. You know, he was hiding out. Um, he was uh, tattered. Uh, most likely, he, he probably didn't have any clothes, to be quite honest with you at all. Because if he had them, he would tear them apart. He would just torment it so badly. He just kind of tore at himself. And nothing could bind him. Nothing could hold him. He, he had this, this strength in him. Uh, and not a good strength from the torment and the pain. Have you ever been in so much pain before? Uh, and I pray that you haven't. But in the extreme levels of pain, you know, people have this kind of like uh, Hercules type strength uh, that comes from that. Almost like you will just lash out, tear out, do whatever you have to do to stop that pain. Uh, and so it's kind of an adrenaline rush in the opposite direction you tend to think of a general rush uh, that you get from uh, just the pain and it, just the tormenting you. So uh, this man that Jesus encounters is an outcast by, by probably any uh, of today's standards and certainly in, in the time of the scriptures that we read. And so you, you probably have seen people that are outcasts or you see people as you pass by in life. You probably drive by a lot, and you might wonder, I know I often do, you know, what, what is their life like? You know, you can kind of tell from the outside appearances, you know, we're not supposed to judge in that, but it also does show uh, the type of life we are living or have lived many times. 
and just the pain and suffering that many have in life. And oftentimes, those are people that don't get a lot of, of touches, personal touches in life. People don't want to be around them. People don't really want to see them. You know, it's kind of like not something we want to, to be around or to be seen. You know, let's just kind of clean that up or cover that up and uh, make things look bright and pretty, you know, with colors and painting and pictures and whatever we need to do to make sure those people aren't seen or heard. But you know what? God loves those people too. He loves all of us. He loves all of us. So that's, that's the first point uh, that we need to look at this morning is do we believe that no one is beyond salvation? Do we truly believe it? I mean, we say it. It's easy to say, but many times we're probably thinking, well, someone just like me, you know, it would be wonderful to come and join this church and be a part of, of the choir or be a part of helping the children's and youth ministry. And, uh, you know, someone that, uh, that is good standing and then wouldn't speak out of turn and would be agreeable with everyone. But we're not thinking of that person that's the outcast, that person that stands out. Doesn't look like us, doesn't dress appropriately, we could go on and on. Uh, we're probably not thinking about that type of person. And that's the type of person that Jesus is talking about and approached today in Mark's gospel. And because of that, you know, Jesus is often making examples and showing how much God truly loves us. He approaches this man in, in such a different way, in such a different manner than anyone had before. I mean, think about it. The, the, the way that they wanted to deal with this man was just to chain him up. Like, don't let him loose. And they probably chained him up, up somewhere that was covered and enclosed, is my guessing. You know, kind of like a prison, basically. It's, it's terrible to think about what they probably did uh, to him. And so, therefore, that probably created a lot more rage, a lot more anger towards people. It certainly didn't help uh, his opinion of others. And so Jesus comes across him, and he is trying to get across to us that, that all are loved by God, that all are created in God's image, that nobody is beyond salvation. Nobody has done so much uh, that they are so far from God that there's just no hope for them. Everybody has hope. Everybody has purpose. Everybody is loved by God. Let's look back again at uh, Mark chapter 5 and move on just a little bit to verse 8. To verse 8. Verse 8 says, For Jesus said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. And so Jesus knows what's going on. There's nothing that God doesn't already understand. The pain, the suffering, uh, the prayers, I'm sure, that he's tormented with this, this evil spirit, this, this evilness that is inside of him, that just all day long. And the love of Jesus, he comes to him um, in the tombs. Again, not a really nice place. He finds himself hiding out in a place that people don't like to go uh, very often, but uh, in the tombs. And he tries to reach out in such a way that he can, and only Jesus can. So he offers salvation. He offers a different way to him. So he calls out uh, to the demon. And of course, we learn more about uh, this demon, this uh, demon that is tormenting this man, uh, essentially gives us the name of legion, which means well, there are many. There are many. Of course, that goes back to the, the Romans and their legions, uh, some 6,826 to be exact. Uh, in a Roman legion. And uh, so there were quite a few tormentors going on, and things going on in his life. It consumed him. Um, and so that's quite honestly why no one wanted to get very close to him. We might use the expression, uh, didn't want to come within a 10 foot pole. It's reach of him. You know, they wanted him to stand back. They, they really didn't know what to do with him at all. But Jesus did. Jesus did. Jesus knew. Uh, this man uh, had a spirit and had a sweet spirit about him, but he needed uh, to be shown a different way. He needed to be given new life, a new direction. And so those, those demons were, were about him. And so we look in verse 13. 
Jesus has a plan for how is this going uh, to be removed from him. And think about this too. Is there anything that God does and it's just happens to us? Is there anything God does and it just it's just the way it, it worked out? I, I don't think so. And especially so in Jesus' life. Everything Jesus does, does for a reason and a purpose. So think about that for a minute when we read this. So there, there's a herd, it says in verse 13, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. So his, his answer for how do we get rid of these spirits was to send them in, into uh, these pigs. And what essentially happens is they, they run off this cliff. And so, again, think about this. This is not just for, for happenstance and that it happened in this way. The livelihood of those around that area, how they made their living, uh, was through raising these pigs or these hogs. And so, um, so now he's got their attention, doesn't he? <laughs> um, he's realized that they're, they love uh, their livelihood. They love all these other things much, much more, much greater than the, the livelihood and the life of this individual. That they put things out of order and out of kilter. And so, because of it, he's taking it away from him, stripping it away from him. You know, God gets our attention sometimes, doesn't he, that way? Uh, there's things that we cling to, and life is just great as long as it's working in that direction. But, as long, but the moment we lose that, all heck breaks loose. And that is exactly what happens uh, with this. Verse 16 and 17 of, of chapter 5. Scripture says, though, those who had seen it, told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man, and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus, leave their region. Troublemaker. All right? Uh, they, they don't like it one bit. I mean, they're so consumed about that, and that's what Jesus is trying to point out. I'm so consumed about what I lost that, that I can't even see and realize that someone's life has been changed, drastically changed. Um, and this man that was tormented, this man that was uh, very well dangerous to himself and to others, um, has now been made whole again. Um, and so they're so um, into their, their way of life and the way they like to do things um, that they can't see that. The focus is wrong. The perspective is wrong. Again, God doesn't just do things uh, for the sake of doing things. He has a point to it. He has a reason to it. And sometimes we cling too hard to these things. And that, that's at the core of the Christian faith is, do we believe that nobody is beyond salvation? That nobody is. That, that all need to hear the gospel message. That all need to have the opportunity to accept faith in Christ. And that's up for you to answer. I mean, I truly believe that. I, I want to live that. But I have to be honest. I have my stereotypes too. Uh, many times it's just my doubts of will that person really receive it. Um, I, I truly believe that all should come to faith in Christ or have the opportunity to. But I also know that there's some that are just going to reject that message. But that's not not for me to judge, is it? You know, it's for God to judge. Let, let God handle that. Let God deal with them. You know, our part, the plan, is for us to go and to share. You know, it's it's sowing seeds. It's you know, you don't know what part you're on that journey in that person's life. You may be the first time they've heard of Christ in that name. You, you may be the 50th time that they've heard the gospel message. And you may be the one that it finally clicks with them. Uh, and maybe it's because of your concern, your love for them. You know, we're supposed to just be obedient and then let God do, do the rest. Let God do the rest of, of that work. So uh, secondly, secondly. Our kind of next point is we, we share the wonderful things God um, has done for us. We share it. We need to share it. And because of Jesus and what he's done for us, it means everything. It means everything. It's changed our life. At least it should have. Uh, we have a story now to tell. A very important gospel message story that we need to tell. Look at verse uh, 18 through 20. In uh, Mark chapter 5, uh, Jesus was getting into the boat. The man who had been demon-possessed begged 
begging to go with him. Now you wonder why. Why would he beg to go with him? Think about that for a moment. Uh, Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Well, it's pretty obvious what he wants him uh, to, to do. It's pretty obvious that he wants him uh, to go and to share this message with others. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. And so the man wants to do something in return to show his gratitude uh, for Jesus. You know, sometimes they call it like a, a, a debt that you're trying to kind of repay. Someone does something life-saving for you. So now I'm going to dedicate and give my life over now uh, to you and to follow you and to do whatever I can uh, in a sense of repayment. Now, here's the difference in that. Uh, that might work here on earth in some way, but for Jesus, that doesn't exactly work. You know, what we're going to give our life over to him, but we're never going to fully be able to do enough good, enough serving, enough acts, you know, that we're going to earn our way to heaven. That's the point. That's why he went to the cross for his sins. This is a gift. This is a gift. You know, you don't give a gift to somebody, and then they say, well, how much was that? I I think I got some money in here. How much did you pay for that gift? I mean, that's not a gift anymore, is it? That doesn't work that way. But you can show gratitude and thanks to them. You can even remember them. I know how it normally works, that you give a gift, uh, and then they give a gift back in return later on sometimes. Sometimes it's at Christmas time. We, we know that's going to be exchanged back and forth. Uh, but we're showing our gratitude. We're not trying to repay it in, in the same or like way because we know it's impossible. We just can't, we just can't do that. It's not going to work that way. But he wants to do what he can, to at least show his gratitude to Jesus. He said, let me go with you. You know, I'm your orders, you know. And Jesus is like, that's, that's good, but you can't, you can't go with me because you've got ministry to do right here, right here at home. And can I give us a little model, too, uh, for what we need to do or how we need to go about sharing our faith in a kind of a two-part component. The first part, he says, go to your family. To your family. Now, where do you have most likely the most influence in your life? Um, now, I know it differs with all of us, but they're your family. Your family is your family, all right? They're just always going to be your family. Uh, and of course, you know how it works. You didn't choose your family, and the guy gave you your family, but he wants him to have uh, impact in his family. Uh, he has that scope of influence. For one, they know how his life was up to this point. And they're going to just be blown away at the change. They're probably not even going to recognize him. He's going to have to prove who he really is. Uh, but he knows that impact, that spark. And he has that scope of influence. And most of us, it's family. And for him, it, it was. So he said, go and tell uh, your family and how much uh, God has done for you. And so we think about that. Who are the ones that you have the most influence? And it may not be uh, so much family. It may also be co-workers or those who are closest to you. And are you having an influence to, on them with uh, your faith and sharing of Christ? And here's the second part. So there, and there's an and there. And he says, and uh, he has had mercy on you. The word mercy. Mercy means to suffer with in the Latin, kind of the Latin root of it means to suffer with. It doesn't mean to have, you know, pity on a person. Um, that's not exactly how it is. It's more of a compassion type way of, of mercy. Mercy means uh, that you know uh, what somebody is suffering with, like you've been through it before. Um, and there's things in life that God allows us to have, I do believe, because there are others that have gone through this or have been through this. And so you're going to be a sense of encouragement to, to those ones. So first, that, that, that family, that family, and he's able to, to share with them uh, the scope of influence that he has over his family. And he can do so in, in, in such a way that nobody else can uh, because he suffered so much. They can see the change there. 
And, and so the mercy that God has had on his life, the example that he has now to go and show mercy to others. Now, there's other parables and stories that Jesus has taught. And uh, it's not that way where somebody has been forgiven. Uh, I'm thinking of the, the debtor that's not um, thankful. And so he, he is forgiven of, of his debt. And he begs the master uh, for forgiveness of, of the debt that he can't pay. And so he lets him go. And then he turns around and, and does the quite opposite. The, someone that, that owes him. And so he throws them in a debtor's prison and locks them up good. And so the master says, I mean, how could you have done that? I just forgave you. So now how could you turn around and do the quite opposite of that, uh, that I've just, which I've done? He didn't show mercy. He didn't you know, suffer with or, or sympathize with and have compassion like he was shown compassion. Um, but this man knows, he knows compassion. He understands the mercy that God provides uh, to him and to others. So there's a challenge for us, I think, in this message today. Um, the challenge is, um, how are we doing in the area of sharing our story with others? Uh, we've been talking about Wednesday nights, just different ways that we can share. That's what it's been about the last couple of weeks. And so we're looking at these unique ways and styles. There's so many ways that you can share your faith. And so we tend to kind of pin it or peg it to one way. But how are we doing in the sharing department? And, and then, will we actually be willing to go and to share with someone? You know, are we willing to kind of step over in that hurdle that we have to actually share with that person? That person that we have within kind of our scope of influence. Um, and when we start there, it's a good place to start. Then we can move on uh, to others that we don't know so well. Uh, I can tell you uh, some personal testimonies of sharing faith and it is uh, challenging to share with somebody uh, that you know very well, because they also know you very well, typically. And so that's hard. It's hard to say, yeah, yeah, I've been there because I've done that, too, and you know it. Um, and it's a little bit different when you go and you share with someone you don't know anything about. But that's also a challenge in itself, because you don't know them very well. You don't have their attention. So it takes time, that building of a relationship. So you already have that relationship with that person that you're close to, that scope of influence that you have. Uh, so God's giving you those people. Are you willing uh, to share with them? How are you doing in that story sharing department of, the, of what God has done in your life, your testimony? So the next few weeks, we're going to continue to look, look at how to be a contagious Christian. And the heart of a Christian is that we truly believe nobody, nobody is outside of the scope of God when it comes to salvation. All have the opportunity to receive Christ. That's our goal. And I've already mentioned before in, in previous messages that there's billions of people that have never, ever heard the name of Jesus. That's just shocking in the 21st century, but that's the truth. Billions of people. That's why we keep sending missionaries. You keep wondering, why are we send missionaries? Why are we planting churches? Why do we keep giving money towards this? Well, there's still billions of people that don't even know the name of Jesus. And uh, we share out of what God has done for us. This simply said and told is just our testimony. It's your story. It's personal. So we need to keep working on that. Work on the sharing of our faith, uh, the gospel message, and to pray for people. Don't forget uh, to pray. Don't enter into these conversations without prayer. And don't Give up on somebody. Keep praying for them. Pray for, for their salvation. Pray that they would realize uh, that they need Christ. Realize that, that, that they have sinned. Realize that they need salvation. Some just think, I got it all together. I don't need uh, religion. I don't need God. Um, I'm fine. I'm just fine. We know better. No, no they're not going to be fine one day. It's going to be very, very bad. We, we talked about that last week. Uh, there will be eternally separated from God forever. Um, you know, we have bulletin covers, and each week it, it varies and it changes. Um, but some of you are familiar with this prayer, and some of you aren't. Uh, but I think it's a, a great prayer. Of course, AA has adopted it. There's others that haven't. It was written kind of with that mindset um, from a pastor and theologian. And the name escapes me. I want to say his last name is Moltmann or Moltmann. It's one of those. Um, but anyways, 
but he wrote it nonetheless. And I think it's good, a good prayer for us this day. It's a good prayer for us to remember because it helps us to put in proper perspective who God is and who we are and our relationship in this process of going and sharing and living out of our faith. Uh, the front of the bulletin says the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. That's the key right there in the end. The wisdom to know the difference. There, there are some things that are just, uh, you know, things that we just can't uh, fathom or accomplish. Uh, but there's things that God has placed in our path and way. Uh, and that we know that God is with us and that God will see us through. And we can only accomplish what we can accomplish. You know, we can get overwhelmed, especially in the sharing of your faith. It's easy to do, uh, to be overwhelmed that, you know, how am I possibly going to accomplish this? Well, you're not. Uh, not on your own. With the Spirit of God leading you and guiding you, you will be able to do, Jesus said, even greater things because it's He at work in us and not of ourselves. So trust in God and help Him, ask Him to help you uh, to discern, to have good judgment in your life. And I think that's what the serenity prayer says to me, that I need to have good perspective and, and good discernment in my life and be accepting of what God has given me. Not be jealous of what other people have or uh, this, you know, whatever it may be uh, in their life that I most of the time think they have. They don't really. They struggle just like you do. Uh, but to, to have a sense of serenity, a sense of peace, uh, that peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ. So I pray for that for you this day. And I pray that God will give you those opportunities to share your faith, uh, maybe today or this week or whenever that might be, that that you might be emboldened to share in the way that God has naturally given you uh, to share. You know, just live in to the spirit and the, to the uh, the gifts that God has given you uniquely to use uh, for His glory. So let's go to word and prayer this morning over uh, these words and these convictions today. Let's pray, dear God. We come to you and ask that you would just guide us in this moment. Lord, that we would be in agreement that we all know we need to share. It's, it's a great commission. You, you called us out. You called uh, your followers to do so and to continue to do so. That's plan A. There's not a plan B. Uh, but we need to go and to share. And Lord, you've given us unique gifts and talents. And Lord, you've also given us those gifts and talents not to just uh, be nice to be used around other believers, but also that we might uh, share uh, those gifts and talents with others that they might too. I come into saving knowledge of you. And they don't to have these abilities to build up your kingdom as we do. And Lord, and so that others might come in unto salvation and realize what life is all about. Not just here, but eternally. That perspective just changes everything. Uh, so Lord, I pray you would just speak to us this day. Uh, how we're doing. You know, how we're doing in, in surrendering our life to you. And, and just giving this over to you this day and each and every day. I'll be down front to receive any that need to make decisions today, uh, whether that's uh, to join this church home. We'd love to have you here at Rosewood First Baptist uh, to be a part of this journey together. Uh, looking forward to, to, to many wonderful years of ministry here and watching God as he's already doing. Uh, the people that are coming and opportunities we have to share with them God's love. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Christ. I'd love to speak to you about that and how you can be a part of the family of God as we stand and sing this closing song.
Now, the title of this series is Contagious Christian. So you can't catch something unless you rub shoulders with someone, right? So we learned that, right, in COVID. We stay put in our house. We, we stay pretty uh, healthy. Uh, but when we go out and rub shoulders with others, uh, we have the ability to impact and hopefully for the good. Uh, so go out there, uh, be among others, and share God's love with them. And uh, one of the styles we've learned about or learning about is invitational. Invitational. Uh, research has even shown, LifeWay's done lots of research on this, that if people are just invited, they'll come. Uh, sometimes it takes a few times, but most of the time they just don't want to be alone. They don't want to walk into a room and not know anybody. So invite someone, invite a close friend to come with you to be a part of something. It doesn't necessarily have to be. We'd love to have them Sunday morning. But we have activities on Wednesdays, you know, maybe a, a, a gospel scene. Who knows? There's so many opportunities. You, you can share the love of Christ with others if you would just invite them. Invite them to come uh, so they're included. They're not left out. Remember, this man was left out. Nobody shared with him the love of Christ. But when Christ came into his life, it changed him forevermore. That's my prayer uh, for you this week and for me, uh, that we would be contagious Christians. We go out. And we would be among people and we would share that love with others that they too might know the love of Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, be with us this week. Lord, thank you for the uh, blessings it is to know you. Uh, to know that no matter what I face, uh, today or tomorrow, uh, Lord, you're with me. And Lord, a world out there of people that don't know this. And Lord, they, they don't have hope. They're discouraged. They're frustrated. They're clinging for, for some sort of answer to that. And we know that answer is Jesus. So, Lord, I pray we would go and share in the name of Jesus. Lord, live our lives in such a way that they too might be impacted with the gospel in Jesus' name.